2 Chronicles 27. That's on page 516 in my Bible. I don't know what page it's on in yours, but uh, let's do that. You heard the story about uh, this, this man. With, uh, he died in a car crash, and his three friends uh, went to uh, the visitation and was viewing his body in the casket. And they said, you know, uh, Rowan was such a nice guy and friend to me that I don't want him to, to leave here empty-handed, so I'm going to give him $500. So he puts $500 in cash in the coffin. The next uh, uh, guy says, well, I agree with you. I'll match your gift. So he threw $500 cash into the coffin. The third guy says, I liked him more than you two. I was closer to him, so I'm going to give him $1,000. And so with that, he wrote out a check for $2,000, threw it in the coffin, and took out the $1,000 change. <laughs> Just remember, you cannot take it with you, all right? You cannot take it with you. Don't ever forget that. Second Chronicles 27, we're talking about Jotham, and he is mighty in the Lord. I just, I love, I love thinking about this guy. You know, we don't talk much about Jotham. Some of you never heard of King Jotham before. Uh, but Jotham is, uh, I, I think, a good man to emulate and uh, has, has a lot of good things. Matter of fact, there's nothing bad said about him. He's one that finished to the end. Now, sure, he didn't have as long a reign as, as some of the others, but uh, he, he just stayed faithful to the Lord. Uh, to the very end, and I, I think that's great. It says there of King Jotham in Second Chronicles 27 and verse 6, it says, So he became mighty, became mighty, because he prepared his ways before the Lord his God. We ought to all want to be mighty in the Lord. Uh, and King Jotham was mighty in the Lord. Now, for those of you who are my age, uh, you may have heard of Mighty Mouse. Anybody ever heard of Mighty Mouse? You remember the thing, here I come to save the day. All right, y'all remember that? Well, uh, sir, yeah. And uh, we, uh, uh, we kind of grew up on Mighty Mouse, you know, always there to uh, win. Well, I'm not talking about Mighty Mouse tonight. And for those of you who are a little younger, I don't know the latest, but I do know that uh, when John was younger, it was uh, the uh, Mighty, uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Uh, you know, and that was a big deal. They might still be around. I don't know. And uh, so uh, I'm kind of, you know, my son's out of that uh, age bracket. But uh, anyhow, so not quite into that anymore. But we talk about mighty, mighty. What does it mean to be mighty? Mighty means strong. It means potent. It means forceful. It means vigorous. Uh, we're commanded, of course, Paul says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Uh, uh, so uh, King Jotham was mighty, and we are commanded to be mighty or to be strong in the Lord. Potent, uh, forceful, vigorous. Uh, we're, we're to be uh, 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 strong in the Lord. How, how, how very important that is. Not to be a spiritual weakling. We got enough spiritual weaklings in the world, do we not? We need some spiritual might. We need some people who are strong in the Lord, who, uh, who will not be blown about uh, by things that go on in our world, but will be strong in the Lord and will stand up and, and live for the Lord Jesus Christ. We need some people who are going to be mighty, some people who are going to be strong. We know here that uh, King Jotham, 25 years old when he took uh, uh, control of, of Judah, reigned for 16 years. He, uh, he rebuilt uh, the, the temple. Uh, he extended Jerusalem. He, he fought some battles and won some battles. Uh, and of course, he was in the line of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was a, he was a mighty man, a man mighty in the Lord. And uh, we all, to all want to be mighty for the Lord, in the Lord, strong in the Lord, and in the power of His might. I'll give you three thoughts tonight. Some of this you're going to hear, if you were here this morning, you're going to hear it again tonight. Uh, uh, but uh, some different things as well as we go through. Number one, uh, uh, Jotham had a great foundation or a good foundation. He had a good foundation. You remember that he had a godly mother and a godly father. Now again, his dad messed up at the end, but for the most of his time, 
uh, that uh, uh, Jotham was alive for most of the 25 years that Jotham uh, was alive when his daddy was alive. Uh, his daddy did a good job and was a godly person. We have his mother's name is mentioned, Jerusha, uh, a daughter of Zadok. And, and Zadok has to do with the priestly line as well. And uh, so he, he, he came from good stock, a, had a great foundation, a godly mother, a godly father. Now, you may, not, you may not have Christian parents, but you know you can still be strong in the Lord. You may have godly parents, and then you decide to be a weakling in the Lord. How sad that would be. Matter of fact, I think it would be very sad to grow up in a Christian home, have a godly mom and dad, and then throw that out the door and waste it and waste it. How sad that would be. How sad that would be. Well, Jotham had a, had a great foundation. Uh, his, his daddy was a good king. His daddy did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, except again right there at the end he got full of himself. And uh, uh, when he became strong and, and prideful, but uh, he, he had good Christian parents. And, and boy, we, we, if you have got a godly mother and a godly father or just one or the other, you ought to thank God for them. And you ought to praise God for them. And uh, then we as, as parents ought to want to be that for our children, to give them that good foundation. Now, they've got to build on it. But boy, if we can give them that good foundation and let them know that they have to build on it, then what a blessing that can be to them. Jotham did not waste the foundation that was given to him by his mother and his father. Secondly, he developed his character. He became mighty in the Lord by developing his character. He, uh, I mentioned this morning you know, that he learned from other people's mistakes. His daddy did get full of himself, became, became prideful, and went into the temple of the Lord to altar incense on the altar of incense. And we know what God did to him. God judged him very severely for that. By the way, again, God could have very well killed him dead on the spot. Okay, He could have killed him dead on the spot. But God gave him that living death, that leprosy uh, that he had. Uh, uh, you you don't, don't take on uh, the idea that you can uh, do what God says not to do. And get away with it. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Now, do y'all think that Jotham saw what happened to his daddy and that had any effect on him? Ooh, I would think so. Because it wasn't shortly thereafter, of course. I mean, Jotham took over right after that, so he had to be around 25 years of age. So he saw that and, and he knew right then. He said, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. There's no way in the world I'm ever going to get so full of myself and forget who has put me here, that I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go my own way. Well, uh, Jotham developed, I believe, a great fear of God because he had seen this, this judgment on his father. And not only, you remember, there was a, a judgment on his father with the leprosy, but there was that great earthquake and, uh, that, that took place at this same time. But I want you to, to notice something else as well. Remember what I told you this morning about verse number 2? It said, And the people did yet corruptly. The people did yet corruptly. See, Jotham, you know, we, we think that uh, uh, we live in very evil times and nobody else has ever lived in evil times. I got news for you. Jotham lived in very evil times. Uh, all the nations surrounding them were in gross idolatry. There were nations, and, and you'll remember this, I've told you this before, but, but there were nations around them that would sacrifice their children to false gods, sacrifice their babies actually throw babies in a river, actually throw babies in a fire uh, in order to, to uh, suffice their gods, supposedly. Can you just imagine that? Uh, we can't even think like that, can we? But that's what these people did. They, they were, uh, and I'll tell you this much, they were barbaric as well. Uh, uh, we, we've seen here lately three or four now beheadings of this group ISIS. There were nations around Israel who didn't think nothing about uh, doing those kind of things. Very barbaric uh, in many ways. And uh, we even read in the book of uh, Amos today about, uh, uh, I believe it was uh, Edom or, or maybe it was Ammon, one of those nations surrounding that that would come in and had killed some of the Jewish women and had ripped some of their babies uh, out of their bellies in essence. It's, it's an absolute amazing thing what was going on in the nations around them. Of course, Israel to the north uh, was idolatrous. 
But even it says here that Judah's people continued to live corruptly and and continued to to live uh, against the things of the Lord. Now, it is not easy in our world today to live above society. It's not easy. You have to swim upstream in our world today. But there are people who, who can do this. And Jotham remained spiritually healthy and strong and mighty in the Lord, even though everybody else around him was, was corrupt. Now, is there another illustration in the Bible of that? There's a great illustration in the Bible of that. Y'all ever heard of Noah? He's a guy that led the Israelites across the Red Sea. supposed to be the other way around you know you usually say y'all heard of Moses the guy that uh, was on the ark and everybody says yeah okay you know, yeah. you know you have to kind of trick a little bit every so often uh, uh, just to keep everybody awake now uh, uh, Noah Noah was the guy on the ark right wasn't he the guy on the ark if I, if I remember my Bible right uh, he was the guy on the ark and he had a wife and how many sons did he have three sons Ham Shem, Japheth, okay, had three sons. By the way, again, if you ever get close to Cincinnati, Ohio, go to the Creation Museum. It, 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 they do a great job even with Noah's Ark. And they're building an ark. I saw another picture of it today, uh, or this past week I saw another picture of it. And it's, uh, it's coming along. Uh, the, the Noah's Ark, three, four families, Noah and Mrs. Noah, three sons, their wives. Everybody else, the Bible says that God was tired of their evil, their wickedness. God destroyed everybody else on the face of the earth except those eight people. Now, did Noah and, Sh- and Ham and Shem and Japheth, did they get involved in the, in the corruption of the world? No, they stood above it. They stood above it. It was very evil, very evil. And yet they stood above it. And that's exactly what Jotham did here. He stayed above it. We, uh, now, I will say this. A lot of times... Uh, Kids who live in Christian homes and who grow up in Christian environments, which there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes if they're, if they're not careful and their parents don't just, just get this in their head, once they do have some independence one day, they go out here and they want to try this and they want to try the other and they want to try that. I've never been able to experience that. I've never had anybody around me experience it. Listen, just stay as far away from it as you can. Stay as far away from it as you can. Don't even dabble with it. Don't even get close to it. Don't even say, well, I want to try this. You know, I've, I've been repressed all my life. No, I've been sheltered all my life. Well, you ought to thank God that you've been sheltered and repressed. Uh, there's so many things in this world that, that we can't even imagine uh, going on, uh, that, that we would be shocked. Uh, we was watching TV the other night and saw the thing from Charleston, South Carolina over here. I don't know if anybody saw the Dateline the other night. Uh, that had uh, Chris Latham and Nancy Latham. Her, now she's got her last name as Cannon. Over in Charleston, South Carolina. Just around the corner over here. Uh, he was a big bank executive at Bank of America. Making six hundred and fifty grand a year. And uh, did you tape it and you're going to watch it later? Oh, I saw Okay. Well, you're, you came to the wrong church tonight then. You should have went to another church. Uh, 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 because you're getting ready to hear the conclusion of the matter here. Uh, I just saw her put her hands on her ears, and I said, okay. Anyhow, the, uh, he, uh, she gets breast cancer, and he really shows no concern for her. And then he gets him a little uh, sweetie on the side, you know, and uh, how sad. And then him and his sweetie contract a killer to kill his wife and, and daughter if necessary, but at least his wife. And they caught him before they ever instituted the plot, put him on trial and, and did that. And, and I thought to myself right then, I said, you know, again, I just, you know, I know that kind of stuff happens, but I'm just kind of immune to that kind of stuff going on. So be glad if you live a sheltered life. Be thankful that you live a sheltered life. And stay away from the corruption. Stay as far away from the corruption as you can in life. And uh, I, I, believe that, uh, I believe that you can be strong. I believe that you can swim upstream. It's, it's tough. It's not easy. But I believe that you can. I believe that God can give you the strength to do that. 
So we, we need to develop our character. I believe that young people, and older people of course, can develop their character for God and have a great character for God. Matter of fact, it was Timothy who was a young man. And, uh, you know, I, I'm sure people said to him, and, and I heard this morning someone was telling me about uh, somebody they know that's been picked on here lately and different things, and, and they told me a little bit of the story and, and, and different things going on. And I said, you know, I, I just hate to hear that. But uh, uh, the, these, I wonder if t young Timothy was not picked on a little bit by just trying to do right, and people were making fun of him or whatever. And so he was kind of kowtowing to that just a little bit. And Paul told him, he said, don't you let anybody despise your youth. You be an example of the believer. If there's even adults that are telling you, well, you're just a little punk kid, you know, you can't live for God. Tell them, forget it, I'm going to live for God. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believer. I'm going to tell you right now, David the king was about 14 years old when he killed Goliath. He was the only one that stood up to him. All those, his big brothers and all those other soldiers, you know, with all this armor. And, and I'm sure his brother was probably two foot taller than he was, his older brother. And, uh, uh, you know, bigger and stronger. Even Samuel looked at him and said, oh, yeah, that's got to be the next king. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, uh, David went out there and he fought Goliath and won that battle. And then, of course, was... was uh, then anointed as the next king when he was just a young man. When he was just a young man. You can live for God. Uh, you know, you need to prepare your character. Work on your character in your life and, and uh, do those things. Now, thirdly, he prepared his ways before God. He prepared his ways before God. Now, there was a lot of unfavorable things going on in the world at this time when Jotham was the king. But there was a lot of good things also going on. In Sunday school this morning, we talked about uh, some prophets. And we talked about some prophets that were alive during uh, these times. And it's, and it's a very interesting study. Isaiah was alive when Jotham was the king. Joe, uh, Isaiah was alive when Uzziah, his daddy, was the king. Hosea was alive during this time. Micah was alive during this time. And I have all ideas now in, in this regard that uh, Jotham knew these men of God and uh, uh, probably spent some time with them. They became friends together. They became friends of the king. Matter of fact, I want you to uh, hold your place there in, in 2 Chronicles in case we want to come back here. and Go to Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26. Well... I just realized that I have wrote down again the wrong verse. Oh, go on. And I looked this up yesterday, wrote it down wrong. Anyhow, there, there's a verse, and, and maybe somebody can find this for me. Look up uh, uh, Uzziah uh, in Isaiah and uh, give me the verse. I'm not going to take the time to do it. If we find it, that's fine. But anyhow, what, what Isaiah did was Isaiah wrote a biography of Uzziah. Turn back to Isaiah chapter 6. I'll show you that at least. Turn back to Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6, and it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and His train filled the temple. So here now is Isaiah talking about when King Uzziah died, what he saw, and then who took over from King Uzziah? Jotham took over from, from King Uzziah. And so Isaiah was alive. And, and I, want to, I, I want to tell you, that there was probably times that uh, Jotham spent some time with Isaiah. There was probably time that Jotham spent some time with uh, Hosea maybe, and, and Micah uh, possibly, and, and had, had these Christian friends who could help him, and who could encourage him to stay above 
uh, falling into sin or even doing the thing that his daddy did. I have all ideas, and, and I want to encourage you tonight uh, to, to make your friends, to make your friends good Christian friends, the people that you can depend on, the people that are going to bring you up and not drag you down. The Bible says that uh, Jotham became mighty. He prepared his ways before the Lord is God. Jose, uh, Hosea even said that uh, uh, our hearts are like, like the ground. And Jesus even talked about this, of course. But our hearts are like the ground. That, that, uh, and, and if we're not careful, they will be hard and unproductive. But they need to be uh, uh, made tender and, and productive. And it's time to seek the Lord, he said in Hosea chapter 10 and verse 12. It's time to seek the Lord till He come and rain righteousness upon you. To, to make your uh, ground fallow. To plow up the hard ground of our hearts and make it strong. Uh, make it productive. Make it tender uh, for Him. Preparing our hearts before the Lord means that we're going to let the Word of God and the Holy Spirit kind of bust up our heart like, like a, a till, tiller going through the soil. Some of you have tilled some ground or you've, you've dug up some ground, surely, in your life. And, and uh, you know, that, that shovel or that tiller goes down and that ground is hard. But, boy, you can break it up and, and make it soft uh, just by tilling it. Well, that's what our hearts need to do. The Word of God needs to be that shovel or that tiller that gets into our life and it, and it causes our heart to become tender uh, for the Lord. I, I love the fact, go back if you would to 2 Chronicles 27 again where it says, He prepared His ways before the Lord. He prepared His ways. Go back to chapter 12 of 2 Chronicles. Chapter 12 of 2 Chronicles. Who was the first king of the southern kingdom of Judah? Who was the first king of the divided kingdom? Anybody remember? Rehoboam. That is correct. Solomon's son, Rehoboam. When we studied Rehoboam, I preached a message on this. And I want to remind you of what it says here of Rehoboam. Look at verse 13 of 2 Chronicles 12. It says, So King Rehoboam strengthened himself in Jerusalem and reigned. For Rehoboam was one in forty years when he began to reign. And he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem. The city which the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Naaman Ammonitus. Look at verse 14. And he did evil because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. You go to 2 Chronicles chapter 27 and you see King Jotham. And what does it say? He was mighty because he prepared his heart to seek the Lord. Was Rehoboam described as a good king or a bad king? He was described as a bad king. He really followed the Lord. He, he reigned for 17 years, and the Bible tells us that he followed the Lord for three years of that 17 years. That was it. Three years of that 17 years. And the Bible says that he did evil because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. And then we flip over a, a, a few chapters and a few years later and we see King Jotham and we see that he was mighty. He, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. He was mighty because he prepared his heart. He prepared his ways. He prepared his life before the Lord his God. Wow. What a contrast. What a contrast. Bad king, good king. Did evil, did good. Didn't prepare, did prepare. What makes the difference? Preparing, preparing. Too many people, sad to say, start off loving God and excited about God, but later grow cold and walk away from Him. I believe it's because they did not prepare their hearts to seek the Lord. The Hebrew word prepare means to stand perpendicular, to establish, to fix, to prepare. It conveys the idea of a deliberate, deliberate effort over a prolonged period of time. The word prepare that we see in 2 Chronicles uh, is also found in other places in the Bible and it's, and it's translated actually in a different way. It's prepare here, but it's translated fixed. In other places. As a matter of fact, I'll show you one of those. Go to Psalm 57. 
Psalm 57. Did anybody Google that uh, verse that I asked? Okay, all right. Okay. Y'all not supposed to be using your phones during church. Psalm 57, verse number 7. My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Now, who wrote that? When did he write it? All right, if, if you have a Bible that has the thing is at the top of the psalm, it says to the chief musician, Al Tashith, Miktam of David, when he fled from Saul in the cave. Now, I don't know about y'all, if somebody's trying to kill me, I, I'm going to have a hard time fixing my heart on the Lord. I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna, my heart is going to be fixed on saving myself. You understand what I'm saying? David said, My heart is fixed. And, and the word has to do with basically being prepared. And, and he said, my heart is fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. My, I will sing and give praise. He said, God, my heart is in the direction of following you. It is fixed on that. I'm not going to change it no matter what goes on in my life. I'm not going to change it. That's what Jotham said basically. Uh, he, he prepared his ways, or we could say he fixed his ways before the Lord is God. He focused in on those things and would not get off to the right or to the left. The word fix there means in position, stationary, not subject to change or variation, constant, firmly held in the mind, a fixed notion. David said, I'm selling out completely to you, God. No reservation." We know that David was a man of, of Bible study and prayer, wrote a lot of, of Bibles, uh, of uh, verses, of course, that we have here today. But he also was a person who just threw himself into the work of God, and his, his heart was for God to be glorified and magnified in his life. You might have heard somebody say one time, well, if I don't work for the Lord, I'm going to end up working for the devil. And you know, that's really true. So just work for the Lord. Work for the Lord. Uh, just give it all to Him. Prepare your ways. Fix your heart on God and His ways. Make up your mind now uh, as, a, as a young person, at, at, at whatever age you are, of course, and, and I know that our, many of our older folks here have fixed your heart on the Lord. How many of y'all, uh, how many here tonight have been saved at least uh, 40 years? Anybody been saved at least 40 years? Okay. I got, uh, I got one, two, three, four, five, about six, seven, eight or so at least that's been saved at least 40 years. Now, you know what these people have done in their life? They've fixed their heart on the things of God. Because there's other people who have been saved 40 years that's not even in church tonight. Anybody here saved uh, uh, between 30 and 40? Anybody 30 and 40? Okay, got that, got that. 20 and 30? Okay, got that. 10 and 20? Okay. Uh, 10 and less? 10 and under? Okay, hopefully everybody raised their hand tonight. If not, then you need to stay after and talk to me. Uh, we, we've uh, uh, known the Lord and our hearts are fixed. You know, we, li we live in a world that's corrupt. We live in a world where you can get easily discouraged. Very easily discouraged. But you know what we got to do? We just got to stay, stay true, stay faithful. King Jotham. I, I don't tell you, this guy is a great example. Great example. He said, uh, I'm going to do that which is right in the Lord. I'm going to prepare my ways. And then, of course, God made him mighty but strong. And we need to be strong for the Lord. Mighty in the Lord through the Holy Spirit of